Hello and welcome to Tarot Electric. I am Mary Shock. I am happy to offer you all a tarot card for you right now in this present moment across time and space. Oh, I pulled the High Priestess. This is one of my absolute favorite cards in a tarot deck, even though it's definitely hard to choose a favorite. But the High Priestess is a meaningful card to me and to a lot of tarot readers that I know really identify with the High Priestess. And I like to think of the High Priestess as our ocean of subconscious, our spiritual connection. She is the energy that pulls back the veil so we can see the other side. If the magician is an energy that pulls down energy and magic from the universe around us, the high priestess is that source energy that the high that the magician pulls from so the high priestess is this universal magical energy that is all around us all the time but invisible and the magician is the energy that pulls it into this world and makes it visible and tangible in the use of magic so the high priestess when we get it as a card it is a call to go deeper, to go deeper within yourself. It's card number two in the Major Arcana, so it's all about balance and also duality. It's a card that's very open, and it's a card that's asking you to go deep within yourself, peeling back layers of who you thought you were going to be, what you thought your life was going to be like, what you thought was true, until you can get to the core truth within you. That's a piece of universal light of star being that's within you and the high priestess wants you to get closer and closer to that and that's your truth. The high priestess asks you to question the layer underneath everything and so that's within yourself when you have feelings and emotions, thoughts, reactions come up within yourself. The high priestess asks you to look at oh well what's underneath that What's the motivation there? What's the root? And then it asks you to do that kind of energy with the world around you too. So when people bring a certain energy to you or react to you in a certain way, the high priest just asks you to look underneath that reaction and say, oh, where's this person actually coming from? What's their true motivation? What's their subconscious root? They might not even know where this is coming from, but you as the high priestess can see. And the high priestess asks you to do that out for the institutions and larger systems in our world. So when you see an institution, an organization acting a certain way, the high priestess allows you to see the root cause, the inspiration, the motivation, the hidden agendas of everything. The high priestess gives you like psychic x-ray visions and she's very psychic and connected to the moon and your dreams. So I would pay attention to the messages that you get and especially the messages that you get in your dreams and question everything. That's the overall guidance. So I hope that that resonates with you all and many blessings as you go about your high priestess vibe today and beyond. Okay, I am truly excited to bring you all this podcast episode and it is an interview with the incredible Jenny Earhart, herbalist, community maker, fun person um, from Sensations in Hamden and Baltimore. So you're going to get a whole lot of herbal goodness. We're going to talk about mugwort and just about everything else. Really Thank you so much, Jenny, for being on the podcast because the, it was just such a blast to talk with you. I also want to let everybody know that you can, of 
officially become one of my patrons on patreon.com slash tarot electric and I'll put a link in the show notes so if you want to get tarot scopes every month if you want to get a personal tarot reading every month for me those are two of the rewards right now if you like this podcast and you want to support me with even one dollar a month that would be a huge help for me to continue be, to be able to produce tarot electric and be more tarot club and classes and everything else that I'm doing in tarot and art. So I'm really excited to share this with you all. I'm excited to share the rewards and I so appreciate anyone who can support me as a patron or who even can share the page with their friends. I just really appreciate you all for being a part of my tarot community. You can find me on my website, maryshock.com. Find me on Instagram at Tarot Electric. And without further ado, please enjoy Jenny Earhart. Amazed by you, Utes. Just making it happen. <laughs> amazed by you, Utes. Doing it all yes. on my Netflix player. I'm just amazed. Amazed. <laughs> it's amazing to me. Amazing. Absolutely. Well, I think you're amazing, Jenny, and I want to thank you for talking with me today. Thank you, Mary. Amazing (laughs) human being, healer, medicine maker, Jenny Earhart of Sensations. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you. Yeah. (laughs) So we can talk about lots. Of mm-hmm. things, but I was wondering if you would share your maybe story with us of right. how you found herbs and plants. Right. Yeah, I mean, always sort of been outside kind of person, in the woods, always playing. My dad had a huge garden. Um, just always in it. Um, always outside, always playing outside, always in the you know in the woods and streams and running around. Um, so yeah, but I mean, I definitely had like. Um, a few like health ailments that guided me towards the plants just where I couldn't deal with like you know just regular medicine or whatever I just got sicker from things and food allergies and all that stuff so basically I've told the story a million times but um but basically I just had like really bad skin stuff it turned into kind of into shingles and it was just awful and I tried everything cow dung Agnihotra ash, which is really powerful medicine, um, honey, all sorts of stuff I was putting on. I mean, I remember just putting everything on. I also was on steroids. I mean, terrible stuff. And the steroids made you constipated. So one day my friend was just like, try Paldarco. I tried it. Gone. So like every kind of skin thing was just completely cleared up. I never had a problem. Knock on wood. And that I was 21. 21, so I'm whatever, 48 and a half now. I like to say 48 and a half. So it's been a long time. So I haven't really... So from there on, I was just like, I don't care what it is. I don't need to know anything else except that it works. And it came from the, you know, it's a plant. So that was pretty much my jam. And then I did landscaping. So that kind of opened me up to more plants because people were like, get rid of those weeds or get rid of that. And I was like, what are these things? So... It just sort of became like, oh, well, I want to know what this is. And so, yeah, I was just kind of fell into it like that. And then I just loved growing stuff from seed. I just grew everything. So, yeah, always had a garden, even like a little tiny one or, you know, pots. So it's just always plants. I find that so many healers I meet, like across modalities, come to healing because of their own yeah. um need for that healing yeah right and yeah, you see totally. it in like energy healers yeah. when they're healing their own trauma and then right. in medicine makers when they have to heal like actual yeah. illnesses and to get very personal that makes sense for me too because something that started me on a path of health yeah. in mind body and spirit was dealing with chronic yeast infection oh yeah that is major and i've met a couple herbalists who also come into wow. discovering because the cure for that really is in the your plants. your diet and your plants, plants right it really it is absolutely and i work for a naturopathic doctor 
for a little bit too. And that was like a huge thing. So I really learned about the nutrition mm-hmm. and, um, you know, calendula and just like all these natural plants that homeopathy mm-hmm. that just like helped people were like, Oh my God, this totally helps. And even garlic. Right. Like tie a little piece of garlic string on the garlic and insert it right up in there. And that helps. That's the best one for yeast infections, yeah. right? Yeah. That helped me and apple cider vinegar bath. Yes. And then I cured it after dealing with like, do- I mean, I was young, so like oh, doctors yeah. and I didn't. And then Monistat. And then you probably have it. side effects. Yeah. So it's like this yeah. circle of like, oh, uh, uh, uh. yeah, yeah, I agree. I it's... grew up eating so much garbage. Yeah. Sugar. Yeah. I think we all so kind of do. Yeah. I feel like home brew totally prevented me from ever having a yeast infection. That's just my theory. What? I don't know. I'm just saying that because I'm like looking at you going, yeah, home brew. I feel like, What does that I mean? I don't even know. I feel like the yeast that we used and like, I feel like I never had any of that problem. Because you made home brew. I don't know. That's just me thinking. Beer? That yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right? So I just like, that's always like that in my a... head. Like, like some <laughs> likes or something. I don't know. I love that. It's just a private theory. <laughs> but test, I mean, everyone I mean, go out and test it. And I mean, we'll yeah, I'm like, make a, get a homebrew. Yeah. Like a homebrew, not like, you know, microbrews and all that. I mean, there's still homebrews, but like find somebody who makes homebrew. Someone you know. Yeah. Is doing it. Yeah. In their garage. Right. In their garage. It. it has to be like, you know, in their kitchen, in the garage. Yeah. I feel like that's where the medicinal properties lie. I don't like beer, <laughs> but I like kombucha, exactly. and that's, like, so, I mean... So great. That's so good for your gut. So good. Plus, I feel like gut stuff is related to depression, yes. which I also dealt with, and with, and that, like, just made me go into Brain, all kinds of healing. gut. Yeah. It's like two brains, they say. Your stomach uh, and your head. Your second brain is in your stomach? Mm-hmm. I'm into it. Yeah. What are your fave herbs, medicines for this gut, gut stuff. And we talked about garlic. I mean, for like digestive stuff, I really like, um, what do I love? I love burdock root. Mm -hmm. I love like all the bitters. I mean, bitters are so popular right now, which is great. Um, I like Angelica. I mean, what do I love? Yeah. I basically like those, like the, um, any kind of bitter, angelica, burdock, even like cardamom, you know, lavender is nice, chamomile bitters are great, um, yeah, all those like marsh, I like marshmallow root for gut stuff, and meadow sweet. How do you like to take Cinnamon. a bitter? Do you just like take a I like to drops? take the tincture, yeah, the tincture. I like the tincture. Sometimes I'll do like a, a tea, but teas are, can be tough sometimes, so I like a tincture, yeah. Can you tell us what a tincture is so a tincture to me is either a fresh herb or dried herb in alcohol and then you let it macerate like you know sit for six to eight weeks and you shake it when you can every day leave it in a dark space i don't always strain the herb but you can't you do people do um but you can use vinegar or glycerin i just like the alcohol the best because it kind of gets in that bloodstream a little faster and um so that's what i do great but i know there's like specific measurements and stuff i don't really measure too well so i just sort of throw it all in the jar and you can use everclear or in distilled water to make sort of a fresh tincture so i'll do that too sometimes oh you can add water to it yeah just if you're using the everclear or like a higher higher alcohol content i sometimes will add distilled water okay Sometimes. Yeah. Most of the time, really, because the Everclear is just too much for me. Yeah. Yeah. I love a tincture. I do, too. My friends would say they're tinking. Oh, I like that. Take your tinctures in the morning. Tinking. Yeah. You can take just a couple drops on your tongue. I always think they taste good. Yeah, I do, too. I mean, some are really intense. You could add them to a tea or something, too, Yeah, you can. Or smoothie. I just kind of think, just take it. I like to just take it. Yeah, just get it in there. Just... Like let it introduce it to your your body, right. your, your your sensitive area, your mouth, your tongue. You know, I think it's important where you're absorbing. Yeah, I feel like that sense. mucous membrane, or is that right? Like the tongue, Sounds get it in there. Right. Gums, blah, blah, blah. just get it in there. What are some of your fave herbs for skin stuff? 
you mentioned, um, that was a big thing for you. Burdock, um, Calendula, and Paldarco. Paldarco, really. What is Paldarco? Um, like I said, it. it's like, I really don't even know. I don't really even care. Yeah. I just know that it totally worked for me. And even over the 20 years, I just have never really... I've never absorbed any of the information I've ever read about Paldarco uh-huh. either. I just like, it's like I, I don't even absorb it. And I've read stuff, but I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I just know it works. So, How much does intuition play a part in kind of what yeah. you do yeah. for folks? I think a lot. Um, and I, you know, I read a lot. Um not so much. Yeah, it just depends if I see someone. I can kind of, kind of get a feeling. I'm just listening to them talk, and you know, just like the attitude. Oh, like I can't do that. I can't. You know, like, there are people who are like open, 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 and some people who are just like not. So I've really learned over the years just to be like it's to let it go instead of like pushing or like I just kind of like go okay. Well, you know, when you're ready, you'll come in and whatever so I try not to get too attached because you really want to like help everybody and because you have all the guide secrets everybody here. I'm like this would be really helpful and sometimes it works for people and sometimes it doesn't you know it's all about I really believe it's all about like your openness to let the herbs in I just feel like they're talking pretty loud like from 10 years ago I don't there's been like an explosion in Baltimore too so it's kind of nice right so yeah. many folks, like, so many studying, being interested, and seeking out, yeah. Like, all of I don't remember, herbalism. yeah. I don't remember that like 11 years ago, I guess, when I opened my stand. So, I don't, but it's so great, it's really good. It's good. You're a total pioneer, I don't know, but it's good. It's really it nice. is good. Will you talk about your stand my and stand. kind of the beginnings of mm-hmm. the sensations yeah. and that evolution? Well, I went to massage school. I, I worked at the family, Hamden Family Center for a little bit. Quit. Worked at Falk and Hands Hardware Store. Saved me. And then, um, yeah, I just, we started doing festivals. Okay. So I made hot sauce, and I would sell that, and I made, like, whatever I was making. I don't even remember. Bath salts, and I think, I don't even remember what I was making. Maybe just random tea blends that I would have that I was growing some plants. Um, super random. And then my husband was selling his art, so we would do, like, festivals. Yeah. And then I just started doing some uh, farmer's market, basically, at the Mill Valley. So it was 28th and Sisson Street. That used to be, like, just a little farmer's market or garden store, basically. And then she had little people, you know, in. It was, like, Curry Shack and Zeke's Coffee and um, Mick the Pirate. And, I mean, I don't remember who else. Maybe Hal was in there. Oh, we had a soap person. So, like, little stands, and then she had all the vegetables and stuff like that. So, I had, like, a little tiny stand in there, and then I got a bigger stand, and then I moved to hardware store, and then here. It's so funny to me to think of the herb shop in the hardware store. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Just, that like, was get crazy. everything you need. Yeah, that was crazy, because it was upstairs in, like, this little office. But, I mean, more people found me there than even at Mill Valley. Really? Yeah. Because people came there to go, like, yeah, I don't think they knew what I was doing or right. what was happening. They were just, like, walked by or whatever. Um, so, yeah. And now you have this amazing space that <sighs> currently in Sensations. Mm-hmm. Yes. Apothecary. Yes. It's great. Tell us, like, what you do here. you got all kinds of herbs. I just, like, make stuff up. <laughs> um. <laughs> List, you know, I really, I started with like 10 herbs maybe. And then most of the other ones, like I didn't sell spices because Mick always sold spices. So we just kind of had an agreement, you know, kind of like a nonverbal thing. It was like, okay, well, you're selling spices. You weren't I'm not like... going to sell what you're selling. and I won't yeah. even sell lavender if you're selling lavender. So it was kind of just a great, that was like a great, great place to start. Um, just like that, like, uh, that like really cool like let's work together community yeah it was just really great um i was really i was really lucky because i had a good group of people there um so yeah i just like make tea blends i kind of like i make some tea blends for like harmony bakery and ma petite shoe cafe when they had theirs i used to do that a lot around the town 
Um, but yeah, I don't know. I'm learning about some Chinese herbs. So I have to translate all those because I have no idea what they are. So we'll see. And then That's just exciting. salves and lotions and yeah, I just kind of like I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like a studio. It really feels magical when you step in here and then see the whole wall like right. full of herbs and I jars know. and with all these different things. It feels like some like medieval like mm. medicine shop. It's you a know? good yeah. I mean, it's a lot. I mean, it's these shelves are great. My friend Bobby and Sue made those, and they just like so that beautiful. was like amazing. I mean, yeah. they're perfect. They are. Yeah, he just he just like rocked it out one day. I mean, it took him one day. What kind of medicine do people come in for most? most. Or if there's like, is there something that folks are all stress? Always... Oh, okay. Anxiety. What do you give them? Um, I have a couple blends that I kind of you know it depends on. The level that they want to relax. Yeah. Some people like want to be like knocked out. Um, so I have some herbs that help with that. Um, uh, and um, so I usually give them like this. I have a piece in the house tea blend or a piece in the house tincture. Um, like I have some mimosa. Fl it just depends really. Everybody's so different. Sure. So, and some people don't like chamomile or they're allergic to it, so I don't want to put that in. So I just sort of talk people out and see what's happening. But immune stuff, allergies, um, yeah, immune stuff, memory stuff, uh -huh. dreaming stuff, digestion's a big one. Yeah, so those, those guys. Energy. I love that you make things so personally for mm -hmm. people right yeah it is pretty personal I just made something for somebody with heartbreak so that was like I know that's sad but she was okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that kind of stuff yeah yeah it really is like you're doing a reading with people oh, to yeah. read their like what they need right right right, right it's not right. like and sometimes I'm like, okay, what is going on? Uh -huh. Like, just lay it out for me. What's really happening with you? And then they people will gradually open up a little bit more. But yeah, you gotta kind of, what is really happening with you? Like get under yeah. that. Like it, you're okay. You're safe here. I'm not gonna like blab it to the world, you know. So yeah, and it's great when other people are in here and they can kind of help each other out, and then. When that happens, I really, I love that. That's my favorite. Cause it's a very community-oriented space. Mm -hmm. I would sometimes, say this yeah. is and your, yeah. your vibe in general. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah, I try. I like that. I like that. Do you feel like that is, I mean, it must just up everyone's ability to heal themselves yeah. and as a community if we're working together yeah right? yeah yeah it's definitely I definitely want to empower the person to take care of themselves and just be like what do you have in your fridge you might I mean Rosemary Glassar that's her philosophy too it's like empowering the person to heal themselves and want to heal themselves right. so she was my teacher so I just like that's definitely ingrained in my head of like what do you have in your refrigerator oh you have this this and that like I recipes out I'll share anything um or guide and if I don't have it I can guide you somewhere that somebody can help you it's really putting the power back into that person to be responsible to heal themselves you're right? a teacher I I am I'm a teacher yes. every day yes it's like kindergarten I did <laughs> say that I know I was like somebody's like you do you teach do you do classes and I'm like yeah I used to or I do I have before and then I'm like, man, I started thinking about it. I'm like, I think I teach every single day. I feel like I always learn something yeah. when I come in so, yeah. and I talk with you. I mean, I, I might start teaching a class or something, but I just feel like I do. Yeah, I thought about that today, actually. I was like, just suck it up, Jenny, and do it. I don't know what my issue is, but yeah. I support that. <laughs> I'd be there. Thanks, Mary Shock. <laughs> Thanks, Mary Shock. Yeah, a lot of people are really supportive. It, I think it's just like finding the time and you know there's so much going on and there's so many great teachers right in Baltimore too that I'm just like I'm kind of like 
Baltimore's doing pretty good. Yeah, there are a lot of yeah. sources mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for this kind of knowledge yeah. and like natural healing, but mm-hmm. I feel like we can always use more. more. Yeah. Like, why not? You know? Yeah. Yeah. It's true. It's true. So, yeah. Plus, you are such a teacher just innately, I think. There's something there. <laughs> yeah. Something's in Definitely. There. Something's happening. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Mary. Aw. Um, <laughs> what do you, like, what are some of your favorite herbs right now? Right now. See. Anything you love? I know. I'm really like, what am I loving right now? I'm really loving my chamomile and like lemon verbena and basil. Oh, nice. So the lemon verbena, I'm just like, I cannot get enough of. Um, even the calendula, like those, and those are ones that I can grow. So I like, I have a lot of them now. Mm-hmm. Um, the holy basil, just like can't get enough. That, yeah. Wow. Yeah, lemon verbena. What's oh, what's that best. about? I don't even know. I just love it. It's so yeah. lemony and it's just got to be good for you, right? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, it's another plant that I've always loved, but I'm like, I don't know what it. It just it just is so great. Just feels good. Ah, feels great. Yeah, yeah. It's really clean and good and refreshing. And um, I mean, I love lemon balm too, and that's antiviral and all that. But for some reason, that lemon verbena is just like shiny it's like a diamond Ooh. <laughs> or it's I like very bring that shiny into my life. i mean and i'm not a diamond person but it is now that i'm thinking about it i'm like yeah like lemon verbena has definitely got that like ooh, you know i don't know it kind of glows to me i love it Ooh, that sounds like solar too kind <laughs> yeah of, you know yeah it feels much more yeah lemony and fresh yeah. Even more so than the lemon balm seems right. to me. I'm familiar with lemon balm, yeah. but not so much right. lemon. Verbena. Verbena. I'll have yeah. to check it You'll out. You'll never go back. <laughs> You'll be like, wow. <laughs> Woo! Found a new Had the lemon love. verbena. Yeah. It's so good. Yeah. So I love that one. I love nettles. Nettles are, you know, and I just made a pesto with like nasturtiums. Oh, my nasturtiums Ooh. are huge right now. And lemon verbena in the pesto. In the pesto. <laughs> Sounds really I have good. some. You can have a taste. Okay, well. Yeah. Yum. <laughs> so yeah, it's good. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Can we talk about mugwort? <laughs> yeah, since that's love it. What I'm obsessed with, obsessed right now, and it's and everywhere I, in yeah. Maine and New Hampshire. I was like on the side of the road. I was like, oh. Did you see it a lot? Everywhere. Because I didn't see it a lot when I went. It'll be. It's there, and okay. it's huge, beautiful, and um. Oh, yeah. I was like, I did harvest something in Maine. Are there any other herbs I should look out for? In well, sweet goldenrod, I saw a lot of that. The Queen Anne's Lace was nuts. What do you do with Queen Anne's Lace? Um, I just haven't really it. played with it. Yeah, you can totally just look love at it and it. love just it. Because that's it. what I do, I think. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> just look at it and love it. And um, But there is, I mean, I just read a whole article about how to tell... The two plants apart, and I can't. It's totally skipping my brain. Water I'm hemlock. Sorry, I think it's water hemlock. No, no, no. <laughs> water hemlock. Um, is it water hemlock? I don't remember. But the the two are very similar. So you, um, I feel like one is hairier or something. I cannot remember. I mean, here we go. Um, but the yeah, Queen Anne's lace. I know a lot of people use it for like natural birth control. I'm just not. Just, I've not. heard that mugwort has been used in that way. Also. Really? Yeah, but. It makes me uptight. Well, <laughs> uh, like that suggestion? Yeah, I mean, like, I know, because I've had people who were like, I want to do natural birth control and the moon and da da da. And I've done that with the moon. And, and then I thought, God, I am so tired of spending all my time tracking myself right. to have sex with some asshole <laughs> or some good guy or whatever. I mean, yeah. I was much younger. <laughs> And, um, you know, in my 20s, and I just thought, screw this. Like, you know, I'm put on a, con- you know. Yeah. I mean, I think it's a risky a suggestion to make in general. And, um, you know? yeah, and so. the natural child book that I have, they're like kids on it. Like, that to me is not inspiring. <laughs> like, I, like, they're kids on that cover. So I get word. That, that was also like, and so I get stuck in my head of like, 
I just don't believe that. Like, what if it doesn't work? Yeah. 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 I mean, but it works for a lot of people. Rock steady. If you want to track your cycle, I mean, I've done it. It's great. Whatever. Um, I'm just past that. I would definitely think that using a condom is always a good idea. And I've had people who say, oh, my boyfriend won't, will then get another boyfriend. Really? I'm sorry. Sorry. Hashtag not sorry. Yeah. Sorry, not sorry. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that kind of the all comes up in here. It can get emotional. I get pretty in- emotional about like what people are trying to do with plants, and you know, I had one time I I would not sell this woman calendula because she was just putting it in her package to sell. So so cute. And I was like, I am sorry. Like here, I have some spruce and I have other stuff and da 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 da. And she came back like two years later. And she was like, Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I totally understand now. Why you didn't want to sell me the calendula just to put in as decorative? Uh-huh. She's like, because I had a baby, and that plant is amazing, and sake, you know, like, it's so good for so many things, so. Yeah. Calendula is the, like, um, orangey flowers, am I right? Yeah, I've done, I've played with that before. So good. Um, you can just eat it, too, you right? You can just eat it. Yeah. It's really good for your lymphatic system and skin. <sighs> calendula lo- looks like a sun. It's yeah, exactly. It's beautiful. Yeah, that's not a filler it's plant. It's just not. I know. Especially but so I when, get really uptight. Yeah. And I don't know, you know, some people know a lot more than I do, which is great, but I'm also just like, I just, sometimes I'm, you know, I don't really know. I mean, ready? Yeah. You I just read can't something know. about, um, like, Here it is. <laughs> something you're looking for. <laughs> There's always something new in here. I read something about, like, um, you know, uh, healers of old who would specialize in only one plant because that's what they grew and that's what was around them. And then they knew what that plant would do. But those healers wouldn't know what other plants did because they weren't working with that plant. And then you would get together and, like, trade with other healers and stuff. I love that. So I totally understand and yeah. vibe on the idea of specializing on what speaks to you and yeah. not having That's to nice know to hear. everything. Right, right, right. It seems unreasonable. There's so much to know. Yeah, it's so How stressful. could you be an you can't, expert you cannot. in everything? Yeah, and yeah. I just know what works for me Yeah, and what other people have shared with me mm-hmm. that works for them, you know, midwives and people who've had babies and, you know, grandmothers and, you know, Every, you know, even my mom will be like, oh, that really helped me. Or, you know, oh, I put that stuff on my leg. That was really helpful. So those kinds of things. Yeah. Yeah, Lifetime study in that way, right? Yeah. It's not something you can, like, read about and then know it all. No. And we grow, we grow a fair amount of stuff. So, um, but really, like, chickweed. have a large knowledge. Yeah. Yeah. Like, chickweed. I love that plant so much, and cleavers, you know, and mullen, oh, mullen is just, mullen's like ridiculous. Let's talk about mullen, you it's know I love it. It's my fave. It's like, this year, for some reason, it's really, like, and it was just so amazing, like, just the flowers, I just, oh yeah, and that's growing everywhere up there, and the flowers in New York were, like, that big. Huge. They were huge. So I made a whole bunch of that. I made like some oil. Um, I don't know. And I'm going to take the stalks and maybe make a tincture with a resin. I didn't even know you could do that. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. That plant is just, I was like in love with that plant. (laughs) I I mean, I am. I just can't get enough. And we were so soft and sweet. And we were tubing. And my friend was like, I got to get out. I got to get out. So we were like, all right, let's get out. And we climbed up this hill and we went to this field and it had been completely whacked down except one mullein plant. And I'd been harvesting it. Uh, I've just had some magical moments with the mullein. Do you harvest the flowers too? I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. I do. I harvested a whole bunch. And then my friend had some mullein cut and put in a vase and the flowers keep blooming. Really? So that was really fun. Oh my gosh. Mullen yeah. always reminds me of the wand suit so in a tarot good. deck because oh. they usually have some flowering bits yeah. on it. And it gives the wands their meaning of 
like growth oh, is a, I is like a big that. piece of the one. So whenever I see the mullen stock like, with the, oh, yeah. I like that. It reminds yeah. me of that. And teasel. Look into teasel. Well, I don't I think know what that is. You'll, you'll love that. That's a, I'm about to harvest them. I found some that's teasel. not on the side of the road. It's kind of tucked away, but I have to get there really early. I mean, because, yeah, they set up a, a fruit stand. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, trying to get there. And, um, but it's on the side, and oh my god, it's like an amazing plant. Yeah, Ooh. you'll check it out. And it's kind of got that same thing as the mullen, like I hear you saying. Like, it has like these little flowers that grow around this like thistly, intense flower. So, here's something kind of silly I wanted to ask you, mm -hmm. but, um, I, you know, in Be More Tarot Club, we go through one card at a time mm -hmm. in the Major Arcana, and we did The Lovers in mm -hmm. July, and then I reached out on Facebook, and you and a bunch of other friends were suggesting, like, herbs for love. Oh, right, right. And I was kind of thinking of it in terms of that card. So I was wondering mm -hmm. if you might have any guidance or intuitive insight about herbs for the card that we did in August, which is spiritual warrior. It's, it's, yeah, it's the chariot. I picked yeah. that card when I the day I cut my hair. Oh, really? After I cut my hair, I picked that card. God, that's so perfect. Yeah. So spiritual warrior. Yeah. So what kind of herbs? And I can that? tell you even more about the chariot yeah. if you want. Yeah, or yeah, like yeah. You tell me what do. you think based because on the no, picture. because I just read your little jam yeah. bam, bam um, and I love that. Right. Oh, I'm glad that it helps. Um. Yeah, the, I mean, the chariot's energy is great for making a big move, yeah. cutting all your hair off uh -huh. and freeing yourself from right. that. So I think its main guidance to me is, like, inspiration, motivation, energy. Love that. It's card number seven, so it's, like, yes. alignment. Right, right. I feel like mullen, man. Mullen. I feel like mullen. Yes. I just feel mullen. It's just, like stands yes. so straight and tall and offers gentleness yes. and flower and beauty but like the strength of like yeah. so like spine foundation rosette you know just like that it's so like it comes from like this soft soft beautiful place and then it's just like you know like, strong but then it also comes like like crown yeah Love nugs. That's so perfect for the chariot. Yeah. In the very traditional chariot cards, he's wearing a crown of like stars. In oh, my card, totally. he's got a helmet on. Because the mullet, it feels like they feel like shooting stars to me yeah. the way they grow on that stalk for some reason. Yeah. Mullet. Mm. Damn it. Mullet's the herb for the chariot. <laughs> really, I really feel it. Plus, you can like pull it out and use it as a light, you know, because they used to dip. You know, I think they used to dip it in maybe beeswax, maybe something, and it was a lantern. What? Yeah. Like, using it like a torch? Because you would, like, set that on fire? Torch, yes. Just Stop. like a torch. Stop. That is <laughs> yeah. so amazing. Like a torch. And, like, you know, the root is even really powerful for um, pain and, yeah. It's wow. a goodie. And the I feel like the root's pretty, like, easy to pull up. Uh -huh. Like, there are a lot of plants that you're like, ugh. But I feel like every time I pull mullen up by the root, it's just like, bloop, it like gives itself freely because yeah. it's just so strong and powerful. It's like, go ahead. Take me. Take me. I got this. Oh, that works so well. Plus the way I read tarot is that seven and 17 are connected. So that's the chariot mm. and the star. So it's just like, so. It's like a no brainer. Perfect. I love that. Oh, yeah. I will never forget when I came in and you brought out from the oh. back that huge mullen oh, yeah. stock. It's like a was, shepherd's. Yeah. It's like the shepherd. Yeah. Mm. And mm. you told me how you would mix things with yeah. it sometimes. Yeah, it's use a it goodie. As a stir. Yeah, it's a goodie. That's a goodie, good, goodie. Yeah. See? Respect the shepherd. Because I have one now that almost looks like a sickle. See if it's like hanging. It's actually, yeah, I'll get it. Oh, only if you want to. Oh, I think I'm I looked gonna... at it last probably... year too, but bring it out again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Guy? It was hiding there. Yeah. That mullen wants to hang out with death. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh, it does look like a sickle. Doesn't it? Yes. Oh, I just want to hold it. And like, it just should be like with the shepherds. Oh, it's still fuzzy too. I know, right? Ugh. I, I love it. It's a goodie. It's, it's a goodie. It's a super goodie. It's a goodie. A little poker. The little one you dessert. gave me was so big, I was like walking around Hampton with it like a crazy person. Yeah, like, it's major. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool, it's right? super cool. And it's just really strong. Yeah. I mean, if any witches are out there that like want a wand but don't have one or have the means to like get a one that's yeah. made for them, like you could just go out and get a mullen stock, right? Yeah. Yes. That's your wand. Um, you know, and leave a little offering of shakalakala, which you probably Beautiful. already do. And even Tell the us. linden, elder flower, elderberry, um, elder. Makes a nice little stick. Oh, that wand. sounds like a Harry Potter for yeah, sure. Yeah, right? right? I think Dumbledore didn't have an elder. They, yes. <laughs> yeah, girl. Some good stuff right there. So the linden and the elderberry, they're like trees, right? Yes. Yeah. So you can cut like a branch. A branch. Mm -hmm. Do you have any other tips for wand making? Um. Would you like shave the, the bark off? Yeah, mimosa would make a nice one Ooh, too, pretty. I bet. You know, the stalk, it's pretty easy to, like, shave the bark off of a mimosa tree. Yeah. I've never done it with the linden, but we could ask, we could ask our friend. We know a young friend. We do. Who makes a good linden a wand. A good linden wand. I really so love it. I will, I'm going to, I'll put, he would be awesome on an interview. Oh yeah. my gosh, please hook me up with okay, any young I will, I will, I will, I will. He is, he is magical, and he has, like, a tattoo of a dragon that he drew his mom drew it in henna on him she sounds cool and like his brothers had a shark they're very cute magical yeah i'll I would, look it up i'll, I'll interview up. all of them he's pretty 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 um, pretty special i like that yeah <laughs> i'm here for you Mary. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any other um magical mystical practices that that you'd like to share no pressure if oh you yeah keep yeah that stuff um really it's just about the music if i have good music on it just kind of like takes me there like i used to make a ton of stuff in my house and i remember i used to make this one tea called get your groove on and i would just listen to the radio it was like wtmd i mean this i just had to have been i don't know god I mean, over 11 years ago. And I remember just like all of a sudden, Easy Wind came on the radio, and I was like, What? I've never heard this song on the radio. And it, like, that can inspire me to make like this. I made this spicy, awesome tea, you yeah. know? So, like, yeah, music definitely plays a huge part. And, um, and really just the, the stars, like, I listen to this astrology thing. So, I can, it really helps to be like, Okay, this is going to be a good creative day, or, you know, it just depends. Music, to know what's happening. Yeah, with music with astrology. is key. And yeah. if the music's off, I'm like, wah, wah, I can't focus. So it's really important for me to have good music. What What do you love to listen to? I love WTMD. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I have that Pandora thing, and that's pretty good. Perfect. But yeah, I just need, I really love the radio. Yeah. So the radio, because you never know what's going to play. And it's kind of like this random. So it's like, oh, kind of a sign or a magical sign mm -hmm. or like music is really cute. Like I'll be like, oh my God, I can't believe I'm hearing this song on the radio. Like, you know, even like Freebird just like <laughs> rock my world. So um, like that kind of stuff is I great. That. So I like not knowing what's coming on. Even when you have like your, you have your stations, like a Bob Dylan station or whatever station meters or you kind of know what's coming up but not always i've read about you know modern readers who will read with a pandora or something like that mm -hmm. on and then you don't know what's coming and maybe you'll get some oh, like divine message from the tune from the music exactly so i love that i think I that's love that. radical yeah. yeah so that yeah i love that i can set it up you know and i like if i'm working at home i like to have flowers out and candles and you know i just i love floating around my house to make stuff so yeah love music that. music's key do you have any suggestions that you would give to someone who's like inspired to get in 
to herbalism right. or working with the plants, but yeah. maybe they don't know how or they're very new. Just start with one plant. I think you're so right on that. Just start with one or, and that's going to be the one for you. That's right. going to be your jam. Like pick one or look around and see which one talks to you or speaks to you the most because you will, you'll be drawn to something and focus on that and, you know, find like a conservatory or, you know, even just gardens right now, walking around, you'll, you'll, things will just pop right at you, especially if you're open to it. And yeah, just find like one thing. I think that's good advice too, because I feel like mullen was a big thing for me and now mugwort too. Yeah. And I feel like I'm starting to get ready to like find my, a like maybe one, one more yeah. to add. Yeah. But it's like, it's really cool. But I feel very connected to mugwort. Yeah. It gives me crazy dreams. It's the best. And uh, even when I was in Amsterdam, I made mugwort tea and I, I dreamed in Dutch. What? Yeah. Like I was just like, because I had never been to Europe and I just sort of was like there and I was like, oh my God, I felt so like connect. I don't know. It just felt really powerful for me. And so they had plants all over the city and I would just pick, like, herbs right off the street. You know, like, they were just had, like, little gardens made up. And you could just take stuff. So I had, like, calendula and chamomile and, you know, lemon verbena, all sorts of stuff. And uh, the mugwort. And so every... I drank the mugwort tea by itself maybe, like, three times. And each time I dreamt in Dutch. Oh, my gosh. I mean, I didn't know what the hell they were saying. So I couldn't <laughs> oh, interpret it. <laughs> but, um, yeah, but sometimes, you know, people can speak in tongues or whatever. And they're like, oh, I know what he said. You know, but I have no idea what, I, what was going on. That's amazing. But it was in, it was definitely in Dutch. And yeah, it took you there. Mugwort. You're going to be so stoked when you go up north because it is really, it's amazing. like huge and it's kind of like doing its little flowery thing. It doesn't okay. really do a flower. It doesn't seem like a flower. It's like a little, and people hate yeah. that. Some people hate that. I know. It's a weed. Some people think. I know. And then I did tell my friend that you could smoke it and he was like, oh, really? <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So it might change his mind. I don't know. Um, I've like smoked it in a smoking blend mm -hmm. too. I've gotten yeah. herbs from you here yeah. to make a smoking blend. I like, I like a smoking blend. I mean, herbal smoking blends helped me a lot quit quitting cigarettes yeah. all three times mm -hmm. that I've quit. And I know. Now I'm, like, I know. I'm, I'm a drag. I'm a drag queener. I like, oh. to, I like to smoke. I mean, it's just hard to quit, but I'm doing good right now. Right. I'm not smoking and, um, doing the herbal cigarettes yeah, always yeah. helped me because I'm like a habit yeah. kind of a person, but I never, I mean, I feel like smoking the mugwort's good, but I get the biggest, like, effects in terms of mugwort connecting me to my intuition and to my dreams and stuff when I'm, like, smelling it fresh. That's wow. That's cool. Yeah. It's amazing. It's what, an amazing plant. What other plants do you like for, like, intuition, mm -hmm. magic making? Yeah. Well, I mean... For dreaming or intuition, I mean, God, I really, I got it. I mean, like, I feel like those yellow flowers of the mullein, for some reason, are okay. really something. But passion flower, I feel like that one, I feel Plus like the looks moon like a little flower alien. is, like, super amazeballs. I've never done anything with moon flower. It's amazing. It's amazing, and it's got, like, you know, the five little pentacle, you know, it's just, like, it's really a special, special plant, and it has this very subtle smell. So does passion flower. So I feel like, I feel like any plant that you're going to, like, look at and, like, connect with, you know, intentionally is going to give you all the information you you're going to need. Yeah. yeah. I feel like it could be, it, you could just take chickweed and be like, <laughs> and if you're putting that energy in there. Yeah, Spilanthes, I really love those too. What? Spilanthes. Spilanthes? Spilanthes. Spelunkin <laughs> Spilanthes. That. So that's like a toothache plant, but the flower right now, holy basil, yes. chamomile. I just feel like all the, anything that's like, yeah, and burning it is great. Mm -hmm. Like lavender, I feel like, frankincense, but you know, yes. whatever's local and growing. Mugwort, so great. Mugwort. Yeah. Mugwort. Lavender, rosemary. Uh huh. I've been um, into rosemary too. And lately. I love burning cinnamon. Oh, do you like burn a little cinnamon stick? Mm -hmm. I like it. That and sounds bay leaves fun. are great. So if you have bay leaves, yeah, just burn those. Those are amazing. 
that, that really like clears the energy. Bay leaves are great. And everybody has bay leaves. You're right. You have that yeah. for <laughs> cooking. Light them up. Yeah. Um, and they grow pretty well here. I have a friend who has one inside. It's huge. Really? Yeah. So That's yeah. a hot tip. So you can go in your cupboard and get some witchy stuff to burn. Yeah. Burn a cinnamon stick and a bay leaf. Mm -hmm. I think I've even some... like burned cardamom or something. I mean, I've, I've pretty much thrown it down. Burn it all. <laughs> burn, it. burn it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So all that sage, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I love it. Yeah, man. Okay. Burn it down. Gosh, you are the best. <laughs> so let's tell everyone how to find you and where to come to Zensation yes. so they can all get a tea blend, a tincture, get You're some sweet. medicine from you. You're cute. Yeah. Um, I do reserve the right to roll out. So it's always good to yes. call 410-215-8508 or the facial book. Um, it really is Jenny Earhart. Um, it's just the, I feel like I'm, I can't figure out the business thing. And the sensations by Jen is great too on the facial book. So I have the two ones right. and I can't figure out how to merge them well i would tell everyone to just go follow both if they want oh yeah because your facebook presence is so fun and i oh, always love good. it like you okay. share the best stuff so. yeah i just like to share what everybody's right. doing everyone should follow both Cute. but it is good because on the sensations you usually tell people when you're I in do. for the week you yeah. know I can't so you can do that on my jenny error anyway 410-215-8508 yeah or come to Hamden. Work. What's the address oh, here? 3408 Chestnut Avenue, yeah. 21211, Hamden. Zen and there's Station so much fun to do. Yeah. There's a lot of fun stuff to do in Hamden, too. Yeah, you guys can do it all. Yeah. Do it all. But Chestnut rules. Chestnut's like the new cool spot, you know? <laughs> and Remington, right? Like the undiscovered <laughs> Hamden <laughs> over here. Yes, exactly. So right. good. Thank you. I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Mary. Okay. We'll say goodbye and goodbye. many blessings. Cute.